approach that just allowed them to come a little above water so that they could at least breathe. What did you shift? Okay, English, yes. Many people still think that if children speak English, their life is done. What yeah. did you realize? Because you were picking children from those backgrounds where everything had to be reset and there was a lot of trauma they are coming from, right? Exactly. Yeah. So actually, we had to do a lot. It took us eight years to figure out. It was not one single shift that we, we needed to do. Uh, what we realized is that uh, now where we are is that number one, all our children have gone through adverse childhood experiences, mm. multi-layered multi multi adverse childhood experiences, which means that they need a strong, stable, caring relationship in their life. Adults in that, they need stable adults in their lives for prolonged periods of time. So uh, we uh, identified this program called Developmental Relationships, which is uh, done by Search Institute, which is like a framework on how to build transformational relationships in children. Uh, mm. And you know, we deliver that to our volunteers. So that's that is one change. So we kind of ensure that Children have uh, stable, so till then we were an education organization. From mm -hmm. there, we shifted to a caring organization. Our primary job of Walter is to be a caregiver, a prime, a, to be a caring human being, mm -hmm. you know, unconditional positive regard and unconditional support for the children. Mm -hmm. The children feel safe. So mm -hmm. being able to create that safe space was one big part of it. The second big part of it was that what we realized that, you know, you can provide all the care in the world, but if nobody's paying for their college fees, and not paying for them to for a, to have a place to stay and to you know stipend to live, not even the most cared child will go to college. Mm -hmm. You know, like you know, there'll be some exceptions, but majority of it, like I wouldn't go to college if that happened, right? Like, and going to college was a critical component because if you want to get into a job that earns a twenty thousand rupees or more, um, it does uh, cost a lot. You know, like uh, like. Unless you have a college education, higher education post 12th standard, you will not be able to hit that those numbers. Mm -hmm. you know, and what we realized that you need to get hit around 40,000 rupees by the time you're 28 to be able to really break out of the cycle mm -hmm. uh, and support a family. Mm -hmm. And uh, so getting out of college is important. So uh, what we realized is that there is, that is just one progressional support, but there are different such progressional support that a family is providing at different stages of their life. You know, and so how to build those different sub progressional support systems, right? From you know ensuring that they have strong foundations in their in literacy and numeracy, to becoming good in education to the point that they can get the stream that they want, to doing career counseling to understand which college to get into, to uh, getting them through college, which is actually quite tough because they're all first generation learners, and then getting into uh, getting into the job and climbing the job ladder. Mm -hmm. That was a very crucial component in all of this because you know uh because they're first generation workers also and they need a lot of mentoring and how to like not drop out of the job because there's a very high mm -hmm. dropout rate also if you don't work on it how to kind of get them through that and then another big realization was that you know the first relation the relationship who they get married to has a fundamental impact on their relationship because they all the gains you've made you can like completely lose it and they also have a tendency to kind of get into relationships which are not that are, that are sometimes toxic just because of the past experiences that they have had. So kind of how do you ensure that they get into the right relationships? And finally, the real breaking of the, the cycle was not monetary. That was easy. What was more important was the cycle of violence mm. the, from the parent to the child. Mm. So we realized that it is important to also work with the children when they are, you know, when they have their children and when they become parents, how do they parent? and providing the right kind of support during the parenting phase so that the intergenerational trauma is broken in a lot of ways. So that's really been the core uh, learning, I would say, uh, in that whole period. Oh my God. So you map mentors at every level for them. Exactly. Okay. Okay, okay. That's a lot of work you know, for each child that you're going to try to, I don't know if I can use this word, but rehabilitate into society and uh, make sure that the child, in a way, has disconnected from the trauma they come from, which is like a huge task. Oh my God, you have to be mad to do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much of energy, Jitin. That's so much of energy. How do you make sure your volunteers are through and through committed in this? When you recruit them in the first place, it's it's that's what I'm saying. Which is that like the only way they can do this is if they 
are able to form that connection with the child. If they form that connection, and like you know, not it's not one volunteer who's doing this, right? Like, mm-hmm. like an average child by the like you know, they have an average volunteer stays with us for anything between two to five years. Mm-hmm. That's the average time period. Mm-hmm. The first year is really an opportunity for us to work with the volunteer to build that connection. and we do a lot of activities around it to make that happen something we have something called a dream camp where the volunteer and the child the children and the volunteers all go to like a resort where they spend 3 days together where they really actually deeply bond where they share each other you know what what are their strengths what do they find beautiful in each other and they kind of share their life journey so far and help them process it they share about what their future you know dreams are and aspirations are and kind of commit to each other saying you know we will, i'll be there to make that happen which means that after those 2 to 3 years they will hand over the children to another volunteer right and but even when wherever they go the child is in the back of their mind and the child needs their support they will turn up hmm. so a lot of support like you know comes to for example one of our kids surya he got into uh, uh, an ar rahman school for music oh. and uh, it is very the fees was very expensive some 2 lakhs or more yeah, like that yeah and but he was able to just re, you know create a what one of those uh, kickstarter kind of pages um and uh, raise the funds from all the volunteers who supported him so far you know so and he was able to and now he's in 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 that college so it's it's really uh, beautiful to see that so it's not it's when you say that you know it takes a family it, it takes a village to raise a child child yeah it really takes a whole community to raise a child and that community building is what is kind of happening where the commu- we are building a community for the child at the volunteer level at the child level also and so through that what we are noticing is that like the resources that is required to do all this like all this energy mm-hmm. all of that exists in the community but today that's not flowing because there are barriers like you know there, there are no connections there are no connections between like i am living next to a child care institution but i don't know about the child care institution i don't know the children in there so obviously in my care and my resources are not flowing hmm. but a volunteer comes into the child care institution and then the volunteer then connects to their own relation networks you know for funding support and all that stuff what's happening is that these connections are getting formed and through these connections you know resources flow and we are realizing there's an abundance of resources yeah you know, like last year was the pandemic and 40 children yeah. passed out of the college and all of them ended up going you know getting placed mm-hmm. uh, you know 100% placement and we were so surprised uh, simply simply because people in the community were all able to kind of you know talk to their friends family and like you know make it happen mm-hmm. so that's really been the uh, experience i would say okay and 